to have marketing teams, you have a product team, and people who are looking after you know how to get new users for your apps and stuff like that. We help uh, you know those people in your teams uh, to retain your users for life. So and we enable this at scale and in real time and with precision by providing a unique combination of a unified user data platform. So uh, you get all your users, your Android users, your iOS users, your web users. Uh, if you have IoT, bring that in as well. All your uh, user data on one platform. You get, you can segment them based on what they've done, what they've not done. Uh, you get actionable insights on them, and you can then uh, reach out to them via, uh, you know, a lot of different channels like email, SMS, uh, you know, in apps and in app notifications, inbox notifications, and the usual uh, criminal push notifications. Uh, we have some uh, elite brands listed below, but we uh, are, uh, I think, I was introduced with uh, 4,000 apps. Uh, that was a bit modest on my side to put in 4,000 apps in my uh, introduction. Uh, but uh, in the real world, we have around 7,000 clients right now, uh, all over the world, uh, using our library. So, what do you expect from this session? You guys. So I want it to be interactive a little bit. Uh, I know this is a tough audience. Uh, not many were answering questions before, but I want to keep it a little interactive because no one wants to just sit and talk, listen to uh, you know, see me talk. Uh, informative. So uh, the basic gist of my thing is that how for all you app developers, since you've not considered how libraries work, or maybe you have uh, whatever is this uh, thing, you will. Uh, you know, learn something. At least I hope that. Uh, and educative, as, because at the end I will uh, go through a small section where how you can publish your own libraries. Uh, so apps versus libraries, the greatest uh, you know battle ever. Uh, what is the difference? What is the difference? Anyone? Small example? Quickly? 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 No one. Really, really tough audience. Uh, so this is your app, okay, this lame phone, I can't do animations, uh, so especially on slides, so this is an app for you, uh, it's front facing, everyone uses apps, okay, great, Facebook, WhatsApp, blah, 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 lot of good apps out in here in this world, some of you, have, some of them have been built by you guys. Uh, that's that's me over there. That's, that's the library, a small part of it, a really really small part. Uh, as small as I can give Clevertap's example, we are around 700 KB of a of a library, and your app is probably in MBs. So I'm not doing the. I'm, you can do the comparison there. So let's start. Uh, this is going to be interactive, and this is your forte and your domain. So you can tell me what dependencies are used by apps. Networking, which Himanshu covered a lot. So retrofit, Wally. -E, I think everyone knows. Man, we started with that. You know, we started Android with that. So if you don't know what's Wally -E and retrofit, then you know you're in the wrong room. <laughs> Images and GIFs. I think everyone knows these two. Glide got adopted by Google. Uh, then there was Picasso, there is four, uh, I think there's Facebook's library now Square or something. Yeah, yeah, see you guys are so excited. Uh, and for videos, anyone? Exoplayer, in Unison, and Exoplayer. And, uh, yeah. Oh my god. Room, yes, room. Realm. Wow, man, you guys are like guessing my slides. Green Dove, I don't know anyone who uses Green Dove. Anyone uses Green Dove? Okay, a few people do use Green Dove. That's like a bit third on my list. Uh, dependency injection, man, everyone is a big fan of them over here. Dagger, man. Okay, just, I think, just, I'll just punch in and you just raise hands if you use them, okay? Dagger, anyone? Whoa. Yeah, coin. I didn't have space, you know, I was running out of space on my slide. So, dagger and butter knife is all I could fit in. UI components, um, again, this is a little debatable because I can only think of constraint layout. 
probably my thinking is a little bit uh, narrow over here. Uh, but other than this, uh, what other UI components have you used? Uh, yeah, I mean that's still part of Android SDK itself. So like some something new, you know, you know. Sorry. Lexbox. Okay, I have no idea what that is. Uh, I will check that out. Okay, so moving on. Oh, sorry. So this is somewhat your app's build little file looks like. Uh, you know, if you're on Android X, you'll have Firebase, you'll have Material, you'll have probably supporting the old versions, so legacy support. If you're using videos, you have Exoplayer, if you have images, you have Glide. Then, you know, Play Services, Retrofit, Room, Dagger, Layout, probably even, uh, I think it goes a bit more. Again, you know, this, you know, it's just this much as a screen, so it's, you know, really uh, small image over here for me. Uh, but I'm sure your dependency files goes long on and on and on. Okay. So now let's see what dependencies are used by libraries. Ideally, this is an ideal world. A library will not use anything. Can anyone tell me why? 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 Correct, in a way. I can, I'm just like, the, not the answer I'm looking for, you're right. But, okay, so the person in the last. Okay. Yeah, okay. Again, you know. So, what I was looking for here is that uh, it's a simple thing. Whatever a library uses, right, you guys have to use it as well. Okay. And I can't force, you know, my 4,000 to 7,000 clients to use a library which you know which I'm using. I can't. Ideally I can't. So I mean there would be a right of I tell you, you know, you know what? You have to use retrofit. You have to use Wally instead of retrofit. You guys will go crazy dude, you'll come and kill me. So you know if you're not using Wally, okay. So and app developers I have you know I have interacted with a lot of app developers because uh, uh, over you know my my tenure at Clever Tap and you know uh, they are a bit rigid. I think you should all accept they are all a bit rigid in their own ways. Uh, so uh, so ideally a uh, library cannot use anything. Okay, you have to do everything on your own. So now I, since I'm going to be following uh, you know using Clever Tap SDK as an example, for, you know going forward. Uh, this are, so we use. Glide and Exoplayer for a couple of our features, uh, but apart from that, really nothing. So everything is and but okay. So we do do networking. We can't live without that. Uh, we have uh, so initially we used to do uh, image handling on our own, image and GIF handling also on our own. But then you know we had a feature where we eventually had to use Glide, and we were like you know what okay. So Glide is like you know. Uh, uh, it has the blessing of Google, so everyone will use it. Same with Exoplayer, blessing of Google, all app lovers love it. So we will go with that. Uh, and again, you know, so databases, our own, can't really use dependency injection, even at the UI level. And uh, definitely no special UI components. So this is exactly how Clever SDK Build Gradle look like. Okay. We, and Compile only, so we don't even, you know, push anything onto your apps. It's just for our our code compiles. That is it. We only use uh, one implementation, which is the support uh, app compact v7. Uh, luckily, Android X, which has come out recently, they have handled backward compatibility really well. Uh, so that gets away, but apart from that, there is nothing which you guys actually need to put. Uh, again, uh, even even Glide and Exoplayer. So if your apps don't use any of this, it's okay. Everything will work. So, what are the solutions for libraries then? Like what I so here comes the informative part for you guys, where I will tell you how uh, it's different for us, how it's. Uh, easy or difficult for us to handle everything on our own. So, how do libraries handle networking? Any guesses? Default HTTP. Sorry? Default HTTP. I couldn't hear you. HTTP 
<laughs> yes, HTTPS because we'll have to go back to the basics. Uh, so you're right, an HTTPS connection. And uh, for us, again, because I'm again using Clevertap as an example over here, it's a custom queuing mechanism. Okay, but you can also have uh, asynchronous, uh, you can have you know multiple threads calling your HTTP uh, you know connection require uh, the connection builder and everything like that, and you can handle the multi-threading on your own. You'll have to because you can't use a library, okay? Since you are a library, so let's see the code, okay? So again, all this code is on from ClearTap's open source code uh, on GitHub. So. Uh, so we use a method called build HTTPS URL connection. Uh, till like a couple of years back, this was HTTP. I don't know why. Uh, first thing I did was change it to HTTPS. Uh, URL connection, open connection. Uh, connect timeout, read timeout, request property, and instance followed redirects. So how many of you understand HTTP at a, at a granular level? So, your endpoint is the domain which you want to hit, okay? But then there are subtle layers be be beneath it where you need to set, uh, you know, headers and you need to set uh, connection timeouts, read timeouts, authorizations and stuff like that. Uh, again, I will remove out that part because that's, that's you know, uh, not technically needed over here. Uh, but yeah, so once you return this connection, you get this connection, you just pass your data, uh, to it via JSON and uh, your servers will have to handle it uh, accordingly then. Moving on, uh, this is something which I am quite proud about, uh, uh, the post async safety method. Uh, so what does this method do? Okay, it's, so a, you need a queuing mechanism, at least we need a queuing mechanism, we want uh, one request to go after another request. Once you get the response for the first one, then you get send the next one. So we have to have to set up a queue, DQ, whatever you want to use. Okay, but uh, they are at the end of it, they are all. Uh, there can be you know several different parts of your library uh, want to do networking. Let's say for example. Okay, you don't you can't hand. Uh, you know, handling it at a multi-threading level is going to, you know, get a little difficult if you have threads here and there everywhere on your code. So what we did was, we created runnables, we pass it through this method. This method ensures that there is one thread and all the runnables are passed uh, through that thread and if there is a, a runnable which is running, it waits for it. Okay, so uh, this is like the most Beautiful piece of code. Uh, again, I'm not taking the credit for this. I have not written this. This was already there uh, when I joined Clevertap. But this is something I'm really proud about that there is such a simple, beautiful solution for something which people have, you know, tried to solve for a long time. So moving on uh, to how do libraries handle images, GIFs, and videos. So we handle. Uh, so we do in-app notifications and we do we have a notification inbox. So let's say your app wants to use a certain way of uh, you know uh, giving some your users some pop-ups or you know having your push notifications sit inside as a notification inbox. Uh, we give, we give that solution as well. So we had to handle images, gifs, uh, videos as well. Uh, so first thing I would start with images and gifs. Uh, going back. So again, going back to the basics, it's LRU cache. How many of you know what an LRU cache is? How many of you used, have you used LRU cache? Okay, so that's like, again, on my fingers I can count them. Yes, you do. Uh, so Android uh, defines LRU cache uh, as some sort of a map. Again, you know, I'm not quoting it directly. Okay, it's my interpretation of, it, of that definition. So it defines it something like a, 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 a map where you can store a certain uh, data for a particular key, and once it's accessed, right, it stays at the top of that uh, of that memory allocation. Okay, so the next time when you want it, it's 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 easier and faster to get it. Okay, uh, and the 
the ones which are least accessed go down uh, in, into that memory allocation uh, and you can then leave it. You can handle the memory allocation as well uh, to delete uh, the stuff which you don't need in the cache. Uh, for videos, as everyone suggested, ExoClear is the best. We couldn't do anything about that. Uh, though uh, I would like to say I have made a, I did try to make a video player using the Android Media Player library, and it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. So, like. Trust me, dude. Exoclear was like Exoclear is difficult, but Exoclear is good. So and there is documentation, so that helps a lot. Uh, so how do you use an LRU cache over here? So what uh, we do is uh, we use uh, so, like images for us are uh, you know approximately you know 10, 10, 12 MB or something. So we we set a minimum cache size. Okay, uh, then we get the maximum uh, you know memory which can uh, be allotted to us. Okay, and then we decide the cache size based on that. Okay, and uh, initializing it. Uh, so what we do is, yeah. So we initialize the memory cache over here. Uh, just do a new LRU cache. And uh, this cache will be the, uh, what we do is that uh, it's size of the image which we get from our servers. Okay, so we just initialize that much of cache so that, you know, we're not using, again, because we are residing inside apps, uh, apps, you know, are already doing a lot uh, over there and we need to take a tiny space. So we take the smallest amount of space possible and uh, that's how we initialize. Uh, then what we do is, uh, how do you add a bitmap or a GIF? Okay, so okay, uh, it's pretty simple. If memory cache is null, don't do anything. Uh, then try to get it. Once you try to check if it's already there in your map, in your cache. Uh, if it's not, then just check if its uh, size is proper. Uh, get the available memory. If your image size is uh, you know greater than your available memory. You can't do anything, don't do anything. Otherwise, just put it in your uh, memory cache with a key. Okay. Now, uh, how would you do it for GIFs? Okay, because uh, uh, LRU cache supports bitmaps. So you can easily store images. How do you do it for GIFs? Any, any, any idea? Okay, what are GIFs? But no, don't give me uh, the full form of it, please. Okay, at, at, at the basic level, a GIF is you know just a byte data of the image. Okay, so you can convert a GIF into a byte array and then store that byte array uh, in the cache. So GIF, uh, so LRU cache supports uh, a bitmap and byte array and the other uh, you know uh, you know other things as well. Uh, so you convert it into a byte array, save the GIF. When you are uh, retrieving it from the cache, you need to convert your byte array back into GIF. So that you can Google. Uh, moving on. So, okay, honestly, using ExoPlayer to stream videos. Uh, wait, did I skip a slide? No. Okay. So, using ExoPlayer to stream videos. So, we uh, allow videos in your uh, in app notifications. So, what we do is, for ExoClear, uh, we prepare the media and play the media. Very simple. Okay. Is it? This is how you prepare the media. I don't know if you can see the code as well. All right. I'll, I'll, so, the first part is, you know, just, uh, you know, setting up your frame layouts and your the player view and, uh, you know, the, again, you know, you add your player view to the, uh, to the frame layout. The main stuff is, uh, I think, from here onwards, uh, where you create a default track selector, and you know, then you create the player, then you use. So we uh, we at Clevertap use HLS because we kind of stream it from our servers for best performance. We can't we cannot load the entire video and then show it to you because you know it's an in app. It has to be right there playing in front of the user. So, uh, if you see, we have an HLS uh, media source here, 
uh, that's our um, server URL which comes uh, to us. Then we prepare it uh, over here. Uh, we set it to repeating because that you form and uh, we seek it uh, to zero and then we start playing. Uh, playing it is the easiest part. You just request the focus, set the visibility, set the player and set player when ready. So set play when ready was is a, again a very beautiful method. I, I actually went inside the code and just saw what set play when ready does. Uh, it uh, again so depending on what media source you're using, it will uh, either load it entirely or load it uh, load it in bits and pieces, and it keeps sending. Uh, you know if you if you kept it as true, uh, so. Uh, it keeps send, uh, sending ready as a callback and it starts playing the entire video. So, again, uh, alright, now this is a little difficult part for us especially because we cannot use room, we cannot use realm, we cannot use xyz. So, we have to use SQLite. So, we, are, we go back uh, to literally <coughs> When did we learn databases in engineering? Second? Second, second. second year, third year, whenever you guys learned it, you have to go back to that because everything has to be written in SQL. Uh, though SQL like helps in you know creating and upgrading and you know handling all the database uh, stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, your table has to be created, your uh, uh, versions have to be handled by yourself. That's what we will look ahead. Uh, so creating tables, handling database initialization, and database update. Okay. So this is again since uh, uh, so this create events table is basically just one table out of uh, all the tables which we have. Uh, so because I wanted to keep a short uh, code snippet over here. So on create you need to execute the SQL. So if you see create table. Oh man, this feels like what? Second year of engineering, right? Create table event events dot get name, so that will give you that's uh, the name over there. Uh, ID as integer, primary key, auto increment, your key data as string not null, your key created as as an integer not null. Okay. So the major uh, thing which has to be uh, you know done over here is uh, how do you handle database uh, upgradation? Okay. How do you guys do it in room? When you want to upgrade, you want to add a new table or to your database, how do you guys do it? Migration. And Room does it for you. So, here I have to do it myself. So, I have a switch case where there are all the versions written. I, for D, so case 1, for db version 2, add the tables and indices needed for v2. So, you check the older version. If it's an older version, add the tables which are not there. If it's, uh, you know, uh, then second one, third one. So luckily uh, at CleverTap we are like you know still on the third version, but I don't know how will we you know keep adding more stuff to it. Uh, but let's see. Uh, how do libraries handle dependency injection? Okay. So first of all, we uh, you know the only dependency injection which we can use is in UI. I like you know if you come to think of it because. Uh, most of it is written by ourselves. Uh, we need to handle all the objects by our own. Uh, so, like the easiest example to start with would be to use dependency injection in UI. Okay, but we can't. So, good old find UI. Okay, I'll give you an example here. So, this is like the smallest XML layout uh, in our code base. Uh, it's a, a linear layout with a recycler view and a text view. Okay. But we need to do this to handle it. So there is you handle the view, you handle the layout, r.id.list view, uh, you handle the text view and you know set visibility so each and everything, set your recycler layout adapter to your recycler view and then return all the views. So this is on a fragment. If you guys didn't notice, uh, that's why all this stuff has to be done. But basically, for anything in our library, uh, 
anything related to UI has to be handled via find view by ID because again can't use anything better. <laughs> Moving on, how do libraries handle UI layouts? Uh, so we cannot use constraint layout, we cannot use anything else. So again, I don't know if you can see this code, but uh, it's all linear layout, tab layout, you know, frame layouts, text views, image views, buttons. Uh, at the max, what we can do is have our own buttons, a custom button. Uh, again, but we'll have to you know, define everything over there, how to handle that button, how to have like a radius or something like that, and uh, then use it in the UI, uh, in the XML layouts over here. So, I don't know, you guys are app developers, probably you guys are more, uh, you know, smarter than me. Can we do, can I do anything better? Any, any suggestions, any thoughts on how I can change my life because that helped me. So, this is a little selfish slide here. Anything, anything, anything. Okay, you can meet me outside and you can tell me. Okay. You guys are really kind and you don't want to insult me on stage. So, thank you. Uh, how to publish libraries? This is where you guys get educated. Uh, so, how many of you have heard about Bitrate? Quite a lot. Nice. Really smart developers. Okay. So, you set up a Bitrate account, you set up your build gradle, and you package and publish. Very easy. How to set up a Bitrate account? Go to your website, Bitrate is your friend. So, if you have. Uh, Again, we are all very uh, enthusiastic open source uh, uh, you know, developers. So, for an open source account, you can just sign up for uh, you know you 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 don't need, you don't need a free trial. You get a proper account if your uh, code is open source. Uh, you add a new repository. This is all their UI. Uh, select Maven because that helps the best. Uh, you can set up uh, your licenses and stuff. And so this is, here the example is of a logger library which I had created. Uh, so you, you need to add a new package and you need to fill in all this uh, data. Good part is they allow you to use github.com as your, you know, you can use everything over here. Uh, so your website, your issue tracker, your VCS, your uh, licenses and everything. Uh, then set up your build gradle file. Okay, this is going to be a little tedious because for prior to everything, uh, you need to get a Bintray username. So as soon as you create an account uh, with Bintray, you go to their settings page, you can find your uh, username and API key. This is needed for you, uh, for your life, from your library to, you know, upload it to Bintray. Uh, that's the authentication mode over there. Uh, in your build cradle of your library, so when you're creating, as Himanshu had mentioned, you can create an Android library module. In your library module, you can uh, you know, just add uh, these class path dependencies and you know, apply plugins uh, which are needed. Uh, again, these are very well documented. I am uh, just, you know, I am a messenger over here so that you guys can know what libraries do. Uh, you can set up an uh, EXT uh, you know, block in your build gradle where all of these are needed by build tray. So your build tray repo, your build tray name, your published group ID, which will be your package name. Okay, so this will be your package name and uh, library name, which you can give anything. Okay, and your artifact. Okay, what is important over here is that your library name will be your uh, published group ID and your artifact over here. Okay, so and then the version name after all. Uh, so that's my uh, developer ID, developer name, developer email, uh, and the licenses which you are using uh, in your library. Uh, again, I don't know if you can see this code, this is really, really small, but again, uh, this is again documented very well. All you need to do is, so with this, okay, if you can't see the code, I'll just tell you what it does. Okay, this handles uh, the upload of your library, creation of a package, and <coughs> uploading it to Bitray. Uh, this is just the code for that. It sets it up nice and fast, so that you, when you have a package and publish it, you just need to run two commands. Okay, you need to you do a gradle w dot uh, gradle w space install, 
that will create a proper package which uh, is shippable uh, and once you do a build tray, upload it up, uploads it to build, build tray. Okay, can you use it directly from build tray? Does anyone know? Can you use it directly from build tray? The answer is yes, but it's tedious because you need to know the build tray uh, link of the library. That's why you publish it to J Center. Everyone has heard J Center, right? Yes? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Bintray lets you, uh, you know, put your library onto J Center for free. Just you need to click one button at the side, at the, at the corner over there. Okay. And that's it. Uh, that's all folks, so any questions for me, uh, I know you guys are really restless right now, so you can meet me outside and, you know, follow me on Twitter and uh, I, I, I tweet about uh, mainly Android and a lot of football, so follow me. Thank you.